It's called fair share, in which Republicans call an end to right to work, would allow that non-union folks benefiting from a union would have to pay part of the dues of the union, correct? People who choose yes. not to belong to a union. And it was only public employees. In, well, the bill that's introduced applies to both public employees and private sector employees. It's the full boat. And any time that you say that I don't have a choice, I have to pay dues to an organization I don't support, in this case it happens to be a union, we are no longer a right to work state. You can't have fair share, quote unquote fair share, and be a right to work state because the right to work without having to belong or to pay money to a union is gone. When you're, gonna, when you're, when you're going to deduct automatically from an employee's paycheck without their consent, money to give to the unions, you're not a right to work state anymore. There's just no way around it. But do you, do you think it's fair though, if you are in a workplace and you're non-union and there's a union guy beside you who's paying the union dues, you need re legal representation by Iowa law, you get it. This, you get it for free while this other guy is paying your way. Representative Vector, you, you're forgetting a key point. And that is when the unions organize, the first decision they make is whether they want to be the exclusive bargaining agent or be a members only union and represent only those members. The unions typically, and I understand why, elect to be the exclusive agent because for two reasons. One, they want to keep out a competitive union. There is competition between unions like between Ask Me and the SEIU, Teamsters and others. They compete against each other. And so they don't want another union to come in and compete for that membership. So they choose to be exclusive for that reason. But the second reason is they want to always be at the table anytime management sits down with an employee. So the unions, in making that election, they give up certain things to get that exclusivity. So that's a decision that the union made. I'm sure if they want to go back and get rid of it, that would be fine. And I would also remind you, we offered an amendment a year ago when we had this debate on public sector employees to change Iowa law that would solve the problem, to say, you know what, union, you, you don't want to represent them? Even if you've got the exclusive right, we'll say you don't have to represent them. But the unions want to represent all those folks. And they want to pull them in and, and their membership dues. I completely understand if I was the bargaining agent for a, for a union, I would do exactly the same thing. But I wouldn't try to have it both ways. And that's essentially what they want to okay. do. Okay, I, I taught school for 33 years. I was a member of ISCA. Uh, there, were mem there were members that I taught, there were other teachers that I taught with who refused to join ISCA and pay their dues. But as soon as trouble happened, and it did a few times, especially with legal representation, then they got their services free. And I just, regardless of what you're saying, I still do not think it's fair to be a freeloader. Then you can change, then I would recommend that you go back and you look at the amendment that Representative Pettengill, who at the time was a Democrat and is now a Republican, look at the amendment that she offered, which would solve that problem for you and eliminate that fairness question that would say, if you're not a member, you don't get those services. And I guarantee you, if you were to introduce that bill, I'd be willing to co-sponsor it with you, but we'll both find out. <laughs> that would we'll, be a good bill, We'll both find out <laughs> that the unions will oppose us. So, so I think what I was saying, you're right, it might not be fair, but it's the union's choice. The unions choose to do it this way. Your yeah. ISAE chose to be the exclusive. Well, the, yes, we were the only, at that time, we were the only unionized teacher group. There was AFT, but we, we never had that in, in Iowa. It's a little too radical for the state of Iowa. So ISEA was our union, yes. Um, the other one that uh, professional teachers of Iowa or whatever, P PEI, professional, professional educators, educators of, of Iowa. Iowa is not really a union, it's uh, an organization that's, they call themselves the professionals and us the union. Uh, I don't, that's grown in some parts of the states but not in others and they, they still, I think, get the, the same benefits the ISCA members get. So, as, so let me ask you this, these four labor bills, are they done for the year? They, the word is they are still alive. Uh, whether they're done or not, I, I cannot sit here and say that. We're still discussing uh, all four of them, but uh, who knows? Maybe one of them will make it, maybe none of them. I will not sit here and say all of them will, however. Let's go on to another issue. Representative Rance, talk about bonding. 
The governor is going around the state asking to bond. Yeah, he's been in Sioux City with the shovel. Cool. $750 million. $750 million bonding. And what David Yepsen in the Des Moines Register said is we could double our debt and still not move up to 48 no. state. But let me ask you this. So what? Is it clear from Seriously, this? Seriously, because the Des Moines Register says that. So what? If you look at the bill that passed the Senate last week that's on tap to be debated in the House Appropriations Committee now, they're going to borrow $175 million. And you know what we're going to pay in interest? Or is it Buck, did you know what we're going to pay in interest? 5%, isn't it? What's the total amount of money we're going to pay in interest to borrow $175 million? Well, it would be, from, it's at 5%. How much money? Do you want me to multiply right now? I don't have We're going to pay back $135 million in interest payments to get $175 million. I think that's ridiculous. I'd use the word insane, but that would be, you know, for people that actually have mental difficulties, I think that would be insulting to them. <laughs> but to put, the, to put the taxpayers on the hook for 20, 20, 20 years, and that's just the first piece of the $700 million bonding scheme. I mean, of the bonding scheme you have, you're not even committing a dedicated source of revenue for it. So we're gonna pay a higher interest rate as appropriations bonds, something I've never seen done in my 18 years in the legislature. We're gonna try something new called appropriations bonds. We're gonna pay more in interest. And the fact that we're gonna pay almost as much in interest payments as we're, as we're gonna get in principal, I think is a poor use of the taxpayer's money. Well, you've never seen this because we've never been in such dire straits before. This this is the worst state worst the state has ever been in economically but right now. Rebs what you're I, spending well, the I money on isn't going to create any private sector we jobs. We haven't that done that. We haven't done that bill in the house yet. Well, then I'm going to I'm then that makes me feel better if you're telling me it won't happen. Oh, I'm not telling you it won't happen. I'm just saying we haven't done it yet and I haven't really read through it yet. Well, the NOBA's out. It's sitting yeah, in the Appropriations I know it is, Committee but right I've now. Been I, all indications are that it's, it's moving through and on the fast track. Now, that $175 million, what is that devoted to, Representative Rance? Well, it, you look at it, it's going to be devoted toward prison construction. It's going to be devoted toward uh, ongoing maintenance of state buildings. It's a lot of things that they tried to issue bonds for a year ago. And they couldn't and they couldn't sell the bonds. A lot of vertical and, infrastructure. And so they're back yes. doing it again. And, 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 and isn't there that are things that traditionally in this state we have paid, we've done cash payments for. We've done pay as you go and paid cash for rather than racking up a lot of interest. Isn't this though what you do with capital expenditures? Uh, nobody buys a house, at least their first house, you don't buy it with cash. You have to borrow, you have to take a mortgage. You can't. You but this is, it, 